Fjords, the Northern Lights, Tesla Fanatics, one of the happiest and healthiest countries in the world. The land of the midnight sun. Yes, we're talking about Norway. You may have been familiar with what some of Norway is known for, but did you know that Norwegians are also insanely wealthy? As a matter of fact, this Scandinavian powerhouse, excluding micronations, in almost every metric is considered to be the second most wealthy country in the world. Norway is also one of the most egalitarian countries in terms of wealth equality. Is Norway just another oil-rich country? Or is there more to the story? Norway wasn't always rich. As a matter of fact, quite the contrary. For hundreds of years, Norway's economy was mostly based on agriculture. This, combined with the harsh terrain and weather in most of the country, made it difficult to farm most things on a consistent basis. As the Industrial Revolution started to take over Europe, Scandinavia was no exception. The textile industry started in the 1840s in Norway, which was followed up with mechanical workshops to build new machinery as embargoes due to wars hindered the import of textile machinery because of the past alliances. An economic crisis hit the country in 1848, resulting in Marcus Thrain establishing the first trade unions and demanding that equality before the law be independent of social class. In the 1860s, there was a period of intense change in Norwegian society. During this time, most Norwegian farmers ended their traditional self-sufficient lifestyle and became more specialized. Farms were consolidated under several land consolidation acts, and new farming equipment was introduced. The country became more industrialized, and many people in rural areas began migrating to towns and cities. With the rise of industrialization, the 1880s and 1890s saw the creation of labor movements and trade unions becoming common. Independence came for Norway in 1905, becoming a neutral nation. In the following 10 years, Parliament passed a series of social reforms, such as sick pay, factory inspection, a 10-hour working day, and worker protection laws. In 1913, women's voting rights were put in place as the second country in the world to do so. Waterfalls for hydroelectricity became an important resource in this period, and the government secured laws to prevent foreigners from controlling waterfalls, mines, and forests. Large industrial companies established in these years such as Eklam, Horsk Hydro, and Sidveranger. During the two world wars, Norway remained neutral but many companies did actively take part in freight-related business. At the beginning of World War II, the superpowers on both sides realized Norway's strategic position. The Nazis invaded in 1940, while the monarchy and government were set up in exile. From then until the end of the war, there were two Norwegian economies, the domestic German-controlled and the foreign Norwegian and allied-controlled economy. The foreign economy was primarily established on the basis of the huge Norwegian merchant fleet, which again was amongst the biggest in the world, accounting for more than 7% of world total tonnage. After the war, the challenge was to reconstruct the economy and re-establish political and economic order. The Labour Party, in office from 1935, grabbed the opportunity to establish a strict social democratic rule with a growing public sector and widespread centralized economic planning. Norway first declined the U.S. proposition of financial aid after the world. However, due to the lack of hard currencies, they accepted the Marshall Aid Program. By receiving $400 million from 1948 to 1952, Norway was one of the biggest per capita recipients. As part of the reconstruction efforts, Norway joined the Bretton Woods system, GATT, the IMF, and the World Bank. Norway also chose to become a member of NATO and the United Nations. In 1958, the country also joined the European Free Trade Area, EFTA. The same year, Norway made the krone convertible to the US dollar, as with many other Western countries did with their currencies. Things took a major turn in 1969, when Philips Petroleum discovered petroleum resources at the Ecofisk field in the North Sea, 
which was defined as part of the Norwegian continental shelf. This enabled Norway to run a counter-cyclical financial policy during the stagflation period in the 1970s. Thus, economic growth was higher and unemployment lower than in most other Western countries. The 1970s was also the beginning of a massive salmon farming industry. From its humble yet ambitious beginnings along the coast of Norway in the spring of 1970, salmon farming has grown into a global industry at the forefront of new technologies. Norway was the first and remains the largest Atlantic salmon farming nation, producing more than half of the world's farm salmon along its ideally placed long coastline, providing ample cold and clear waters year-round. This, with the addition of a very large coastline, came with extremely lucrative fishing rights in the North Sea, notably cod, which is one of the most expensive and sought-after species in Europe. The fishing industry, along with the other natural resources and the proper management of them, is by far one of the main reasons why Norway is doing so well today. The years from 1950 to 1973 are often referred to as the golden era of the Norwegian economy. GDP per capita showed an annual growth rate of 3.3%. Foreign trade ramped up more, unemployment barely existed, and the inflation rate was stable. This has often been explained by the large public sector and good economic planning. The Nordic model with its huge public sector has been said to be a success in this period. The Norwegian growth rate in this period was lower than that for most Western nations. Rather than just a few individuals or companies controlling or profiting from the extremely lucrative petroleum industry, the Norwegian government created the Government Pension Fund Global. The purpose of the fund is to invest parts of the large surplus generated by the Norwegian petroleum sector, mainly from taxes of companies but also payment for licenses to explore for oil, as well as the state's direct financial interest and dividends from the partly state-owned Equinor. The Norwegian government actually owns 67% of Equinor. Equinor, formerly Statoil, was responsible for 0.52% of global and industrial greenhouse gas emissions from 1988 to 2015 but they have also been very active with more environmentally friendly projects, such as wind energy in other countries, such as Scotland, Poland, and Germany. The Government Pension Fund Global is invested in international financial markets, so the risk is independent from the Norwegian economy. Over 9,123 companies in 73 countries are invested in the fund. Because the main goal is to diversify risk, investments cannot be made in oil companies or Norwegian companies. If there was a recession, for example, it would not affect the fund, as the investments are made in foreign companies, and this would provide short-term protection against domestic economic shocks. Today, the fund has become the largest of its kind on the globe, owning 1.5% of all public companies in the world. At its peak, the fund was worth $1.35 trillion, and with Norway's relatively small population, this was enough for every Norwegian $250,000, and the fund is expected to grow. While it's understood that it's not sustainable, both financially and environmentally speaking, the petroleum sector, for the meantime, is still very important to Norway. In this respect, the historical tradition of raw material dependency has had its renaissance. Unlike many other countries rich in raw materials, natural resources have helped make Norway one of the most prosperous economies in the world. If petroleum went away tomorrow, Norway would take a blow to its economy, but it would still be relatively stable. Is Norway the perfect economy? Well, perhaps not. But the way the government managed its natural resources compared with many other countries is definitely outstanding. With Norway and many other countries taking the lead in many environmentally friendly stances, such as the abolition of petroleum for fuel in the near future, and with petroleum reserves potentially running out, what will things look like for Norway? Will the country's massive hedge fund, with investments in foreign companies, 
bridge the gap between relying on natural resources before a new main industry hits the Norwegian economy. What do you think Norway's next big industry will be? That brings us to the end of the video. Please put your thoughts in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for further videos just like this. I'll see you in the next one.